going, I think. Oh, here we go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. I'm Tara with Fort Collins Pagan Pride. I am the vendor coordinator. Normally, I work behind the scenes, but since this year, we're not able to have a gathering. We still want to support the pagan community. We still want to show people that we're here and we're doing stuff. So I'm going to be doing some interviews and still sharing our vendors. Um, today, I'm really lucky. I have Charlie with me. Um, you don't normally see him. He's not one of those people you see up front, but he plays a really important role because without him, you wouldn't hear anybody on the stage. So, everybody, this is Charlie. Charlie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a retired engineer and I'm an amateur musician, uh, actually play semi-pro with a couple of groups at times, and got involved uh, through mutual friends with this event and decided, well, this is something I can do to help the community. Well, and you, we really appreciate it because I can hear people on the stage all over the festival and it's not like that at all the other festivals I go to. So we definitely appreciate being able to hear people uh, and, you know, you're like that puppeteer behind the stage, making sure everything goes smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is your favorite part about Fort Collins Pagan Press? Well, given my personal interests, I have to say it is the music. Uh, it would be my favorite, but just seeing other people is probably a second. You know, me seeing some people that I don't see all that frequently otherwise. Um, and I enjoy being able to help the musicians project and, and send their message to everyone. It's definitely a good place to gather with people you don't see every day. Um, oh, excuse me. No sneeze. Okay, no, I got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you've been with Fort Collins Pagan Pride from the start, right? I have. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about how you've seen it change over the few years, several years that it's been going on? Well, the first year I was involved, it was over at, uh, I believe it's Civic Center Park is the name of it. It's a much smaller venue. It was a much smaller event. We probably had four or five vendors that I remember. There may have been six or eight, something like that. Uh, but it was, yeah, very small event. We had uh, a couple of performers uh, who each performed briefly solo and then performed as a duet. So music was small. I think the there may have been one workshop, something like that. Uh, and, you know, I would say that, you know, 50 to 100 people dropped by during the day. <laughs> and it's grown significantly in size, both uh, from what's presented, you know, the number of vendors, the music, the workshops, and also, you know, the number of people who come out to just see what's going on. And it's a good outreach to, in a lot of ways. Yeah, we've definitely outgrown that first park. I think we're outgrowing the library park as well. It's really exciting to see everybody come out and to be able to meet more people like you know so um okay so why do you feel or what do you see that's important about fort collins pagan pride what's most important yeah i think it's just a way for the community to reach out to the rest of the city and the local and the regional community and say we're here this is our message uh and it's a way to reach out to other people who may have similar interests, but may not be aware of what's available, what's going on. Uh, so it's, and it's a, a bit of a celebration. Yeah, I like the celebration. I also agree when I talk to people about it, there are quite a few people who are like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, I'm so excited every year where there are so many more people who see that. And we just hope to keep growing like that because that's been really exciting. Um, so we've talked a lot about Fort Collins Pagan Pride. Um, I also want to just kind of talk a little bit about um, faith and the whole reason why we gather together. Um, so, as you are a more unique, uh, well, as we were talking earlier, we're all unique, but as a more unique pagan faith, can you tell us a little bit about your pagan faith and kind of how you got there? Well, I, I come to this from a little different direction than some people, but uh, I am a, a Lutheran by my specificity if you want to get into that but I look at it that I'm not intelligent enough to know 
what God chooses to look like to everyone else. And, uh, you know, I, and the power there is far beyond anything I can do. So I'm certainly not one who can say that, uh, that I'm the only one who has this right. It's like, well, I'm not sure I have this right, but I have something that feels comfortable to me. Uh, I think we all need to look into our own hearts and souls and figure out what is God to us and how does God speak to us in multiple forms or single form, whatever. And we have to understand that for ourselves. Uh, looks like we're having a little bit of... Yeah, you're frozen right now. Hopefully it's not bandwidth on yeah. that. There he is. We got we lost for a second. So you have I, now? hopefully this is not a bandwidth problem on my end. I have uh, uh -oh. issues with my Comcast connection. Well, you know, we're using the same provider, so hopefully they get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I really like what you're saying about, you know, nobody knows what everybody else is seeing. And and you're frozen again. <laughs> oh, we've lost them again. Oh, are you there? Okay. I'm here. Okay, you're We're moving. we to finish before we completely lose each other. Let me move about 10 feet. I can move oh. over to a are table. Are you there? I'm here. I'm walking. Oh, we're back. Let me see. It had given. Is that better? OK, I moved to a table which is directly over the. Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you. <laughs> it's like that okay. commercial. I moved across the room to a, oh, to a table which is directly above oh. the. Uh, modem in the basement. <laughs> uh, well, just one final question. When that's having any advice for, you know, people getting out to enjoy their faith. Your question got garbled. I think we're losing. Yeah. So I would just wanted to ask, I'm going to move also closer to my modem. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Let's see if this helps. We'll just come on this way. Is that better? It's getting better. You're stable. You're staying with me now. So this one may have been on your end. <laughs> here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. All right. The inside's just so dark at my house. So my yeah. last question was just do you have any advice for pagans or anybody getting out to enjoy their faith um, and coming together as a community? Well, the I actually recently uh, did a study on spirituality alone from what your specific beliefs are. And the, the point of this was that you, some people seem to feel they have to fix themselves before they go looking for what God might be. And it works the other way around. Uh, you have to find you have to find something to anchor to before you can fix yourself. So, don't let that hold you back if you think that you have not gotten your life straightened out yet. That's exactly why you need to be searching. That is great advice. I think that that's a really good note to end on because a lot of people I do think wait for their own perfection before they seek out that divine energy. And that's what the divine energy is there to help you do is find your own perfection and what's right for you. So that's great. I, that's great. That's a great thing to end on. Thank you. Uh, so just thank you for coming and joining us. And hopefully this all comes through nicely and we can continue <laughs> to grow as for Paul and Pagan Pride and as a community and all of that stuff. Um, so again, Thank you for coming and thank you everybody for watching and we hope that you're all having a great August. And thank you, Tara, for your contributions. Oh, thank you. We will see you soon. Excellent.